examples here. The strategies and opportunities associated with this that, uh, that as there are many parts of your solutions, uh, you can have many paths and parts in your own market timing. Uh, this can be uh, market timing verticals, basically. So there can be multiple channels that you can go from a different customer sub-segment, you can enter the market. You can uh, choose different geographical strategy that you start from less developed countries and evolve to de developed countries. So you go head on and you start from, from the, the, the hardest, the, the US market winning there and then spreading all over uh, uh, with the global approach, regardless of where you are physically uh, located, uh, because this is how you position your product and service uh, for the market. Or you may start in a very uh, small market where you can quickly acquire a lot of uh, concentrated user, user uh, pool to validate your industry. And this is, for example, food delivery systems. And even Uber in the very beginning, they had a very clear market entry strategy. Uh, to validate their, their concept in, in small scale first and then expanding city by city. And even Facebook had this uh, university by university approach until they opened up uh, to the public market. <clears throat> so different ways, different strategies within that bigger opportunity uh, to use as strategies within side of that timing as well. Um, However, since the problem remains the same, uh, there's always an opportunity, even if you come after the market. So, uh, a, a music is a great, great example. There has been always the next version, usually enabled by technology developments and technology innovation to enable new ways of consuming and accessing music. So, the market, the customer, and the mission can very much stay, stay the same. And this is why it's so important to work on that mission and vision and why those frameworks are helpful uh, in con con considering also the, the market timing problem. Because if you're serious about your mission, the market time timing also actually becomes a tool because there's always new waves within the same mission uh, happening. So, when you're not only considering, you know, winning on a certain technology uh, solution, when it's not the technology wave that you're just pushing solutions into market and not really seeking the problems to, to be solved, um, then, then that can be, may be different. But there's always an next version of a technology as well. But it just means that the, the market timing is a factor. It's a key factor for success reading into that, but it's also a tool and it's just information in that sense and a concept to understand. But it's not the end game. Uh, it may be end game for one solution that you try to win and change the status quo and become a significant actor. And if you can catch that wave, great. But I bet it, the Uber model is not the end of how pub, like personal transportation is going to be for the years to come. Facebook it definitely is not the end of social networks. There's going to be a better version out there, but the question is what will be the new status quo in, in, uh, in social network? I bet it has something to do with how privacy is handled. But we'll, that remains to be seen, but these are the, the types of things in context of market timing. So one of the, the, the kind of mind, um, the picture in mind is to have this kind of, uh, now imagine if there would be um, uh, a tsunami coming, if you would know that the tsunami is coming and you have the opportunity to catch the wave. Maybe the wave is too big uh, for sensible surfing, but the market is full of waves. You can read into the weather forecast. You can be actively there, but if you are not, preparing, if you're not reading the signals, if you're not trying to uh, understand what's happening in the market, if you are not positioned yourself actively waiting once the wave is there and you are on the shore, you're still just packing, or you come there once the wave has gone, then basically you have to 
wait for the next wave, but may maybe the weather is not the same. Maybe the mega trends are not generating uh, the type of wave in the mission that you are after uh, for coming few years. So then you may want to change your strategy to how you position yourself um, after the tipping point. And this why the active waiting is it means that you are not passively just you know waiting and not doing anything. So that means you have the opportunity to 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 read the weather forecast and also to tell your friends and to come to the audience to see once the wave is coming and it's coming and and you have time to make others prepare so you can educate the market. And, and that's one way of, of uh, developing market for yourself. Um, but you should not be doing that alone. You should join forces with those who see, see that uh, coming as well. So this, you can also Google this term for active waiting and, and learn many interesting things uh, about that more. So, Ideation, um, let's look at some of the, the, the thoughts behind ideation and also some of the megatrends and some of the, the concepts on how to think of coming up with uh, uh, potentially bigger opportunities. So the key thing, of course, is to, to see what is the problem in the marketplace, what is the problem within the context of, of um, of market segment or the, the user category that you like to serve and with what kind of value you want to bring, what kind of pain you want to remove, what kind of problem you want to, 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 to remove from the market, uh, or what type of uh, opportunity you can test in the market, create a model where people don't yet see a problem, but once they see a solution, they can actually then better also identify the problem. So that's why this, this problem solution fit is that you can work on either side, but usually it's easier when you identify a clear problem that you're working to, to solve. And if we think about the, the, the music industry, like, like it's because it's such a, a common phrase, so you can think like what was the problem that uh, the MP3 player uh, removed from the CDs? So, the, the, actually, the quality of MP3 playing was the sound was worse than on CD, but you could actually compose these, you know, um, uh, collections out of individual songs. And of course, there was the whole uh, unregulated or, or the Napster time when the music was free, but that probably was pushing that market even more. But eventually, a business model was applied. Uh, to, to make, make it uh, so good experience and efficient in form of iTunes, where you can still buy individual songs, create your collections, but to get the whole user experience uh, to the level that was better than any Napster, but also at the same time uh, resonated more where people understand that it's, they actually want to pay and not feel guilty of, of you know, stealing artists. Uh, creations and not contributing uh, for their work. So, so basically, that's a good example that there's always a way to make it better. And the next phase, of course, was the streaming and the subscription-based model of consuming. Now that removed the friction of building your collections and maintaining your purchased music and kind of this management problem. And now you just have the library of unlimited access to, to, to the majority of the, the songs out there. The disruption thinking, um, so basically that means to come up with a totally new approach, uh, something that is to definitely not iterative, but uh, what opportunities uh, are, are to be considered how to disrupt, and we'll cover that a little bit more. And then identifying big future opportunities. Mainly, this is reading heavily into the mega trends of what are the big enabling factors on technology side, like blockchain, on regulatory side, like GDPR regulation in Europe, and the following privacy uh, privacy de uh, regulation developments uh, and so forth. And of course, you can use all of these. Uh, 
uh, thought processes to help uh, cover uh, even an existing ideas to try to validate it from different perspectives or make it stronger with different strategies and so forth. So uh, to find a problem, uh, to find a solution for that, um, so basically this is to, to find a, a very small problem that many people have uh, or you could have um, a, a, a big problem that few but big actors have and therefore it's an individual uh, customer is very, very valuable for with big amounts for many decades even and so forth. So, so it's really uh, to seek for, for these problems. To ask from customers uh, uh, and more importantly to, to then asking is you have opportunity to observe customers and their problems and pains and asking it in indirect ways, collecting the information from signals and data points and behaviors instead of asking them directly. Like I would say it's a problem how majority of people uh, save their uh, uh, their data online, like many put it on Google Drives and Dropboxes uh, and, and certain type of information perhaps should not be put there. Uh, but this is just, you know, they, people do it because it's easy. Uh, but if there would be a better way that would be as easy, even tapping into uh, the same patterns or even same tools to access it, but still in a different level, how it lives inside the more protected, that could be an opportunity. But there's a lot of these types of things. Um, you can you can kind of personally experience how the market can have opportunities that people don't realize them themselves because they are so common and used to using certain things. Is when you travel to another country and you try to use the public transportation. That's a good example of, of when you enter a new country, you can probably use the, the public transportation in your own country pretty easily and you don't really think about all the, all the details because you use it commonly. When you go to another country, there's it's the same but different. There are certain nuances to how do you get the ticket, how much does it cost, how can you travel, how do you read into the signs and, and schedules and so forth. So you could easily see many opportunities to make it better. So that's the type of experience where, where you can seek into a, a, a digital space or with new solutions as well. By, by um, observing those certain segments. So in this context, you would observe only the foreigners using the public transportation the first time and see what pains they are to be able to solve the first customer's experience better. That most likely would also be better for all the existing ones um, as well. But it would be hard to introduce that concept to market and get it changed. So that's not necessarily a good business opportunity as such. But there are many things where doing a change, doing just a competing product or service and, and, and making customers aware of that, that they start to move there. And it may be that the old customers never use, it's just that the new customers seeking same solution, just choose your product first and don't use the old anymore. And over time you win and perhaps that old actor actually wants to buy your company, uh, to buy your solution instead of uh, trying to build that and offer it as an additional product. So that depends on what your, your strategy is and what your vision is for how you want to build your business. So you can also, instead of coming up with better idea or designing a solution, you can also try to see whether such, such a fitting solution would already exist, whether there's already research studies done about that, whether there's also uh, existing solutions out there that are kind of fixing one part of the solution but haven't figured out a more holistic, complete model. So you don't have to necessarily reinvent everything yourself. Actually, when it comes to innovation, very, very often you don't have to and you even, even shouldn't think that approach. Uh, I, I think we all know how Apple came up with their innovation. Majority of them were definitely not their own innovations at all, the bits and pieces. 
but how they built the experience for customer was their innovation. They just made it at the right time with the right type of experience and win at the markets because of that. And they were quite successful in that. They, of course, they have had their failures as well, like some of the very early hat things and some other 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 uh, computers. But if we statistically look at their average success rate in, in timing and making the better package from existing innovations, uh, I think I think that they have been one of the masters uh, in this. So the industry disruption uh, point. So one way to think about it is like there's many stale industries out there. Uh, let's say a fintech is is a, is a currently actively in motion as a broader market that is going through this uh, thing like like the whole industry is going through now this change. Regulators are pushing that it needs to change. More innovation needs to exist. Many are seeing the opportunities. Many are invested into that. Many are coming with sub-segment solutions on how the financial industry uh, should look like because of the tools today. So it's not even how it would look like. Everyone's already working how it should look like because it definitely should look like how it shouldn't look like how it is today with all the tools and user experience and all the uh, behavioral patterns existing on the marketplace. So uh, a, a typical approach is really to break the current service points, all the points that the customer interacts with and other, other key pieces, break those into parts in the table, name them, it's like post-it stamp, post-it exercise or similar, and then how would you assemble this experience or how you would example uh, the process in a new way, utilizing all the existing technologies, platforms, user behavior models, and so forth for totally much better experience. And in addition, you could act new experiences along the way. You could combine additional components, you could combine additional data, you could improve and, and, and make this much better. And at the same time, the key is to try to remove or hide or automate all of the types of parts that doesn't actually need user interaction or where user just wants to get the result and not needing to do any activities to get to that result. For example, the change between iTunes and streaming music. You don't have to individually buy the songs and decide the purchase decision individually. You can just have the whole library there, you, you purchase to access all the music and then you just play whatever you want, whenever you want. So basically, uh, the, the lateral innovations are usually referred in the ways of like, how would Uber for industry X or customer Y, or how would Airbnb for parking look like? How would Airbnb, Airbnb for storage look like? How Airbnb, Airbnb for, 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 I don't know, uh, remote control cars would look like. You name it, there's like, these are lateral concepts. Uh, how to take a mega trend from one industry and apply it to another one. So the key is that uh, in case of Uber or Airbnb or other these big, big uh, that has changed the status quo already, there's many sub-segments that have much higher likelihood of succeeding because the business model at top level has been already validated. Anything subscription-based, changing individual purchases into subscription uh, models, even going further in a model where for you can get physical goods like e-commerce in a subscription format for certain items like the items that you always consume. There's a lot of these types of opportunities out there. Uh, and then identifying and reading more into the big ideas, the mega trends that are happening uh, in the in the development patterns, technology, society, business, user behavior, and so forth. And really uh, forecasting or envisioning how these changes in technology are going to impact different types of actions or different types of things 
in the more customer experience level, in the actual real business or services level, end, end customer level, or customer serving the end customer in close proximity. Uh, very, and how these chain, big trends will change that. And if you can align two or three mega trends that are impacting each other, now you have very interesting uh, ability to see certain types of ways how uh, the world may change. You, you don't need to commit to exact change how that will be. You can try to write it in the form of vision and then try to iterate that vision and validate whether the vision makes sense. And then you build your mission separately. How do you go from here to there? And you can have, if it's big enough, it has room to navigate within at the time as you are uh, moving forward in the milestones. And you can have sub-services, uh, more today market-oriented services to capture already the customer base while you are building that, that actual um, bigger um, change maker. So you can develop the ideas and scenarios that are looking to take advantage of this. And I'll cover some of these uh, digital transformation, data economy, and some of these others just to give a flavor of some of the things that we have uh, strong visibility from our work and uh, there are others, but these are, are just as some case examples, and there are some 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 overlaps. But uh, in another world, the, the, the self-driving cars is such a great example. That will of course overlap to self-driving uh, boats and, and uh, freight ships, and there's a big development happening here uh, in Finland with uh, the autonomous sea. A project where majority of the, the, the ships would be autonomically, perhaps not the, the ship that, that are more like a cruise ships, but all the transportation ships and so forth. 